Hi, everybody. I hope you're well. Uh, today we'll read from a book titled Notes from Another Los Angeles, Gregory Ayn and the Construction of a Social Landscape, edited by Anthony Fontenot and published by MIT Press. Considering the breadth and scope of his creative output over a long and varied career, the Southern California architect Gregory Ayn, 1908-1988, remains relatively unknown. Yet his work in the tumultuous 1930s and 1940s encapsulates the extremes of what was perhaps the most dynamic and influential era in the wide sweep of 20th century American architecture. During this period, Ayn moved among the top tier of the design world, collaborating closely with the era's most celebrated figures, including Rudolf Schindler, Richard Neutra and Charles and Ray Eames, and was friends with the architectural photographer Julius Schulman and the architectural historian and critic Esther McCoy. Ayn was intimately involved in the design and production of major modernist works, including Neutra's landmark Lovell House 1929 and the Eames' iconic Playwood furniture, and his buildings were admired locally, nationally and internationally, deeply appreciated by their owners and occupants, and honored as cultural and historic national treasures. This is the first book to focus specifically on Ayn's housing projects, which include Dansmuir Flats, 1937, Park Plant Homes, 1947, Avenel Corporative, 1948, Mar Vista Houses, 1948, and Community Homes Cooperative, 1946-1948, and built. In his effort to address common architectural problems of common people, Ayn first gained national recognition for Dansmuir Flats, praise for its sawtooth or zigzag planning approach. The project was widely celebrated in the popular and professional press and was featured in the Museum of Modern Art exhibition built in USA 1932-1944. In 1945, Ayn began collaborating with landscape architect Garrett Ekbo, and together they developed an innovative approach to neighborhood design that involved the creation of subtle forms of collective spaces in the construction of a social landscape through the integration of architecture, planning and landscape. While promoting ideas of mutual investment in the built environment, these ingeniously designed neighborhoods were meant to provide common people with a new kind of shared urban space that encouraged social interaction. The following pages will explore how these extremely successful yet controversial housing projects, many of which were based on the cooperative model promoting equality and racial integration, fused Ayn's interest in radical left-wing politics and design. Ayn himself is an enigmatic, if compelling figure, one primarily known for his passionate commitment to progressive politics. Edgar Hoover, director of the FBI, viewed Ayn as someone engaged in subversive and dangerous political activities. As Anthony Denzer details in this volume, since 1944, Ayn had been under near-constant surveillance by the FBI and other authorities. Although he was never formally blacklisted, these circumstances made it increasingly difficult for Ayn to secure funding for his projects, and his work continued to be closely scrutinized for communist influence. Despite the repressive politics of this period, Ayn steadfastly pursued his vision of a cooperative communal approach to the post-war housing crisis, which stood in direct contrast to models promoted and underwritten by the conventional consumer-centered laissez-faire approach to urban development. Consistently on the front lines in the fight against institutional racism, AIM rejected the government-imposed restrictive covenants of enforced segregation. 
at Community Homes Cooperative, for example, the one unbuilt projects studied in this book, Ain and the members of the cooperative opted to let the development fail rather than give in to the demands of the Federal Housing Administration to ban African American and Asian Americans and other minority groups from living alongside white neighbors. Beginning in 1939, Ain shared an office space with James Garrett, an African-American architect with whom he formed a partnership and worked in collaboration on numerous projects throughout the 1940s and 1950s. In 1946, Garrett became the second African-American admitted to the American Institute of Architects in Los Angeles, after Paul Williams. And in 1951, at the height of anti-communist hysteria, Ayn and Garrett, working in collaboration, took a bold and uncompromising stance by designing and building a home for the civil rights lawyer Ben Margolis, well known for defending the blacklisted Hollywood Ten and the group of Latino youth wrongfully accused of the Sleepy Lagoon murder case, 1942. During this period in California, as in much of the United States, racial discrimination on the part of white residents and officials contributed strongly to injustices that permeated deep into all aspects of culture, including the promotion of racial covenants resulting in widespread housing discrimination. In 1940, Garrett designed and built houses for himself and his close friend Lauren Miller, the noted African-American activist, civil rights attorney and future judge, next door one to another in Silver Lake. In Los Angeles, networks of black and white activists formed alliances to establish a progressive housing agenda. A strategic goal included dismantling racially restrictive housing covenants, which was greatly advanced by Miller, who served as vice president of National Committee Against Discrimination in Housing, and his wife, Juanita Ellsworth Miller, deputy director of the Department of Social Welfare for the state of California, who were key protagonists in the national struggle for racial equality. This was the period when Ayn and Garrett were part of a group making proposals to the government for low-cost housing, which resulted in a sympathetic exchange of letters with Eleanor Roosevelt. This was also the dynamic exchange in which Ayn designed the most innovative housing projects of his career, all of which are featured in this book. Ayn was the key architect at the center of this extraordinary network of activists who worked tirelessly in the battle to achieve a more equitable, multiracial, democratic ideal. Ayn's housing projects represented a new paradigm in the neighborhood design that celebrated the everyday life and diversity of ordinary people. Ayn's innovations, including open kitchens and movable partition walls for a flexible house, aimed to solve specific problems rather than pursue arbitrary expressions of uniqueness. His high-density developments anticipate contemporary efforts to design buildings with a minimal footprint. Generously illustrated, this volume reintroduces Ayn to a forgetful field. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.